Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kim Nash and I am the Executive Director of Data and Accountability for Cumberland County Schools. The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with a brief overview of the Cumberland County Schools student performance data for the 2021-2022 school year. I'd like to begin by um, briefly sharing a bit about the North Carolina accountability model. So as required by North Carolina General Statute 115C 8315 and the North Carolina Every Student Succeeds Act, also known as ESSA, school performance grades are based on two overall components, growth and achievement. The indicators for elementary and middle schools differ from those at the high school level. The differences can be seen in the chart shown. On the left in purple, you see the elementary and middle for achievement include reading EOG scores, math EOG scores, and for those um, middle school students who are taking North Carolina Math 1, those scores are also included. In addition, science EOG scores in fifth grade for elementary and eighth grade for middle, and also English learner progress. For high schools, in the achievement portion, English 2 and high school math EOC scores, graduation rate, English learner progress, biology EOC scores, ACT and ACT work keys, and math course rigor. All of those are included in the achievement portion. And growth is measured in each of those levels, elementary and middle, and also in high school. Those components are used to calculate school, to calculate school performance grade. Growth is measured using EBOS. EBOS is a value added growth model that measures expected progress against actual progress. So as you can see with the information on the right side of the, of the graph, that these measures also align with the school's long-term goals. Participation can be a factor as well in the school performance grade, as well as long-term goals. Schools are required to assess 95% of their students. If this part of the model is not met, it could count against the school negatively within those measures. So moving on to discuss district proficiency composites. Proficiency composites are measured by the percent of students who reach acceptable achievement levels as identified by the state. These composite values represent all end of grade and end of course assessment results for students in grades three through 12. As you can see in the graph, the orange bar represents levels achieved prior to the, the pandemic in 2018 19. 2019 and 20, there were no state assessments given. In 2020 21, that was during the midst of the pandemic. So you can see the achievement level there. And then the blue bar represents year one of our recovery efforts following the pandemic. So you can see it from the shifts in the graph that from last year, 2020-2021 to 21-2022, we have gained a little more than 10 percentage points in our district performance composite. So we are well on our way back to those pre-pandemic levels. Next, we want to drill down and take a look at grade level data, beginning with elementary schools. The graph design is the same. So the orange will represent pre-pandemic 2018-19. Yellow is in the midst of the pandemic. And blue is our year one of recovery efforts. The graph on the top left represents elementary reading levels for grades three through five. And on the bottom right, the graph represents math levels. So as you can see, the pattern is very much like the district 
performance composite where there was a drop in each of the levels at each, each of the grade levels and each of the subject areas in proficiency. But again, we are on our way back up towards those pre-pandemic levels. So on average in our elementary schools, reading gained approximately 6.5 percentage points from last school year and math gained on average 16.2 percentage points with the highest gains occurring within our third grade math, the proficiency levels increased in third grade, a total of 21.1 percentage points. Next, you see the graph for science. The assessment given in fifth grade science produces results that are again, very similar with a 16.3 percentage point increase. Shifting our attention to middle schools. The gains are very similar to what was shown in our elementary schools. Reading levels increased by 4.5 percentage points, while math saw an overall increase of 7.9 percentage points. The strongest jump in proficiency came in eighth grade math, whose gain was 11.9 percentage points. Science, like the others, also saw a gain of 8.1 percentage points. Shifting to high school proficiency levels, those levels are calculated using high school math, English 2, and biology results. For high school, the graph shows each of the four subject areas. The largest increases for high school also occurred in math. Math 1 saw an increase of 15.8 percentage points. And high school math three saw the greatest increase of 21.3 percentage points. Our high schools did experience a few decreases in other measures, one of which was in ACT performance. This drop, however, follows a significant change in the acceptable composite level. Prior to the 21 22 school year, the marker for success was a composite score of 17. During the 21-22 school year, that threshold was raised to a 19. The charts above indicate those decreases. Graduation rates also saw a slight decrease. From 2021 to the 21-22 school year, graduation rates dropped from 84.2% to 82.8%. Other significant highlights within the data can be found in academic growth. 89% of schools in Cumberland County met or exceeded growth for the 21-22 school year. Cumberland Polytechnic High School and Jack Britt High School received the maximum converted growth score of 100. In total, 55 of our schools exceeded growth, 21 met growth, and nine did not meet growth. Additional highlights from composite scores, the three highest elementary school composite score gains were from Warren Wood Elementary, who saw a gain of 32.4 percentage points, Ponderosa Elementary, whose gain was 27.4 percentage points, and finally, Mary MacArthur Elementary School. The gain for Mary MacArthur was 24.7 percentage points. In our middle schools, the highest gains were seen at Reed Ross Classical Middle School, whose gain was 22.2 .2 percentage points. Lewis Chapel Middle School, the gain at Lewis Chapel was 16.5 percentage points. And Luther Nick Gerald's Middle School, 
the gain at Nick Gerald's was 13.2 percentage points. In our high schools, the greatest gains were from Cape Fear High School at 22.5, Pine Forest High School, whose gain was 18.3, and Douglas Bird High School, whose gain was 16.5 percentage points. Of the 55 schools that exceeded growth, those with the strongest growth are shown in the chart below. Jack Britt High School led the district with a growth index of 13.55. Cumberland Polytechnic, 10.99. Lewis Chapel Middle, 8.9. Bill Hefner Elementary School, 7.54. J.W. Seabrook Elementary, 7.45, Rockfish Elementary, 7.31, Pine Forest High School, 7.05, 71st Classical Middle School, 6.95, Cumberland Road Elementary School, 6.87, New Century International Elementary School, 6.75, Stony Point Elementary School, 6.71, Cumberland Mills Elementary School, 6.64. E. Melvin Honeycutt Elementary, 6.19. Ponderosa Elementary, 6.18. Reed Ross Classical, 5.71. Stedman Elementary, 5.55. Five. We also saw some shifts in our school performance grades. During the pandemic, the 2020-2021 school year, the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction did not calculate school performance grades. However, based on their model, Cumberland County Schools does have an estimated school performance grade. The chart on the left shows where the school performance grades would have been had they been calculated during the pandemic. And as you can see, we would have had no A schools. We would have had 45 F schools. During our first year of recovery, on the right side of the screen, the chart in yellow shows our current school performance grades. There are four A schools. There are 14 schools with a school performance grade of a B. There are 31 C schools, 33 D schools, and four F schools. Three of our schools do operate on the alternative accountability model. An update for the 2021-2022 low performing schools is shown. During 2021-2022, there were 23 low performing schools. Those schools have been on the low performing list since 2018-19, which was the last time that the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction identified low performing schools. So out of the 23 low performing schools, 15 of those schools will be removed from that list this year. Those schools are shown in blue. The schools shown in green will remain on the, the low performing school list, but they did meet growth. The school shown in red did not meet growth. And then we have one of the 23 low performing schools that has closed. The low performing school list for 22-23 is shown with the newly identified schools in red. There are eight newly identified schools, making our total number of low performing schools for the 22-23 school year, a total of 16. So while the data has given us much to celebrate, we also recognize that there are opportunities for improvement in our schools, in our practice and support. The first is increasing focus on high school achievement. 
on the ACT in graduation rates and specifically in high school math one. To deepen the early literacy work, to continue the focus on increasing proficiency for all students and all student subgroups, and to improve instruction and support in our tier one and tier two schools. Finally, we'd like to leave you in the celebrations found throughout the examination of our data. In Cumberland County Schools, there were proficiency gains in every grade and subject area tested in our elementary and middle schools, and in every end of course area in our high schools. There is a reduction in the number of recurring low performing schools. Recurring low performing schools are those schools who have been identified as low performing for two out of the last three years. There's also a reduction in the number of currently low performing schools. And finally, 89.4% of schools in our district met or exceeded growth measures. We believe that there is a lot to celebrate within the examination of our data as we look forward to year two in our recovery efforts. We know that together we will rise.